Methodist Church, a place where we believe that whoever you are and wherever you happen to be on your faith journey or your life journey, you are welcome here and you are beloved. I am so glad that you're in worship with us this day. My name is Teresa and I'm one of the pastors here at University UMC and indeed we welcome you. As we get situated in worship this morning, just a couple of things that I want to call your attention to. First of all, you can find in your pews those small black registration pads, and we always appreciate having a record of your attendance. And those of you that are any guests and visitors among us, we would be delighted to have contact information if you feel comfortable, either a phone number or an email address, so that we can uh, simply be in touch and let you know that we're glad you're here and see if you have any questions about the church. I also want to lift up to you uh, a reminder that today is Communion Sunday. We will celebrate the Great Thanksgiving. That will come later in the worship service, and as we've been doing on our Communion Sundays lately, we will have some responses during the liturgy, and those some responses are found in this small black book in your pews. I also remind you that on Communion Sunday, we remember that in the United Methodist Church, we have an open communion table, and that means that all of you are welcome to come and receive the bread of new life and the cup of forgiveness if you feel so led. Um, at that time, our choir will come and be served first, and then ushers will direct you and guide you down to the altar rail. Our altar rail offering this morning goes to the pastor's discretionary fund that enables us to reach out and help people in our community who are in need of utilities and rent assistance, those sorts of needs. Friends, I also want to share with you that on this World Communion Sunday, we are blessed to have a guest with us named Divya. Divya is a UT student and a traditional Indian dancer, and over the last several weeks, she's been using space in one of our unused classrooms to practice during the week. And we had this crazy idea to see if she might be willing to share her dance with us on World Communion Sunday. And friends, she said yes, and I'm so delighted. So would you give her a warm welcome? Indeed, Debbie, thank you for being here. Friends, let us stand as we are able in body and or spirit as we join together in our call to worship. The whole world is in God's hands. Everything that lives and breathes, everything that simply is, everything. From the farthest spaces to the inmost places, God is with us and we are with God. Alleluia. As followers of Jesus gather here at this table with our friends and siblings around the world, we remember whose we are we praise. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. And shall we pray with all that we have, with all that we are. We worship you, God of all being. Bless this day, bless this time, and bless this gathering. Bless this world with your overflowing love. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Our opening hymn this day is in this smaller black book, The Faith We Sing, Come Now, O Prince of Peace. 2232, let us unite our voices in song. We will sing the first two verses in English, and then we'll sing the first two verses in Korean. <laughs> Thank you. 
peace of Christ be with you. Let us exchange signs of peace. morning, friends. I'm going to invite all the children to come down. How's everybody doing? Good. Hi, good morning. All right, I want you to raise your hand if you have ever forgotten something. Oh, yeah. Maybe you forgot, like, an object somewhere, like a toy. Or maybe you forgot to do something. What have you forgotten, Dean? Oh, lots of things. Mm. So you forgot maybe a toy or something? Yeah, Sydney, what did you forget? Forgot a whole computer, yeah. Yeah, you guys, one time I left my sunglasses in the craft room here across the breezeway, and they stayed there for about a month. And I didn't know that they were there. I completely lost them. And then I found them again. It was awesome. But sometimes we forget things. Sometimes we forget things that just happen. That he wants to share what's up. Yeah. So sometimes, yeah, we forget to do things, or we forget that things happen or happened. Yeah. Well, people have lots of ways of remembering, or tricks to remember these things, right? We have reminders. Um, and one of those ways is celebrating. Today, we are celebrating something special. Does anybody know what that might be? What do you think, Chris? Let's see, Rowan, do you have an idea? What do you think? What are we celebrating today? Look at our altar. I see some different kinds of bread and a globe. The world. Cultures around the world, yeah. We're celebrating something called World Communion. That's right. Um, so we celebrate World Communion to remind us that while we are gathered here in our church, right, there are people all across the world that are going to take communion today, just like we are. And it reminds us that even though we gather here on Sundays, there are so many other places in the world that do the same thing. And we are a part of a really big community who are learning to love like Jesus, just like we are. So we're not alone in this. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. All right. Are you guys ready to pray? All right. Dear God, thank you for this big, wide world. And every person in it. Thank you for celebrations that remind us of your love. Amen. I'll walk with you to child's care.
join me in the prayer for elimination. Gracious God, we do not live for my heaven. Let the heavenly food of the scripture we are about to hear nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the sixth chapter of John, verses 25 through 35. <coughs> When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. I recently learned that the poet Pablo Neruda loved a particular poetic form, that is the ode. He wrote a total of 225 odes and most of them are dedicated to very common things such as flowers, animals, and plants. Among his odes, the most interesting one to me is Ode to French Fries, <laughs> which makes me hungry. And the most meaningful one is Ode to Bread. In Spanish, Oda al Pan. Ever since I read it, it has remained in my heart. This ode begins with these lines. Bread, you rise from flower, water, and fire. Dense or light, flattened or round, you duplicate the mother's rounded womb. How simple you are, bread and how profound. How simple and how profound. In the old Neruda finds bread profound because bread is for life, not for the life of the privileged, but for the life of all the people. And to keep this bread the way it is meant to be, Neruda pledges himself to fight against injustice that takes bread out of people's hands. For the end of the ode, he envisions the future victory of the people in that fight, saying, Crowned with sheaves of wheat, we will win earth and bread for everyone. Then life itself will, will have the shape of bread, deep and simple, immeasurable and pure. And the bread we eat each morning, everyone's daily bread, will be hallowed and sacred 
because it will have been won by the longest and costliest of human struggles. Truly, how profound bread is. In the struggle for justice and in the dream for a new world, bread is not just simple food, it is a profound metaphor for the life of the people. For me, there is a simple Asian bread that has profound meaning. That is a steamed bun stuffed with filling. You can see on the table. And it is actually related to one of my dreams, the dream Koreans call Tamil. Tamil literally means conception dreams that give a, a sign of forthcoming or ongoing conception. I know it sounds crazy. But this dream is very common for Koreans. So in Korea, when someone has a baby, a very typical question people ask is, what was the Tamil, the conception dream? And in the past, this dream was a big deal because people believed that the dream foretells the baby's future somehow. No wonder they wanted to dream of something auspicious and glorious like a dragon, a tiger, giant fish, jade and gold, the sun and moon, and so on. But I already told you what I dreamed of. Yes, a steamed bun. <laughs> Can you imagine? I dreamed of a steamed bun for my newborn daughter, Sage. I wish it could at least look auspicious and glorious somehow, but no matter how many times I rewind and play the same dream again and again, it was just a soft and fluffy steamed bun. <laughs> it was a somewhat disappointing dream. Yes. But soon I came to cherish the dream after I discovered its profound meaning. I learned that in East Asian culture, the stuffed steamed bun has been a sign of new life for centuries. The Chinese word for this steamed bun is bao, and this word originally indicates a package. Look at this Chinese letter bao here. Does it look like a package? It's an ideogram that came from an ancient, ancient graphic symbol visualizing a baby in a womb. So, in conception dreams, Bao means a package of blessings, package filled with good tidings of new life. So how profound a steamed bun is. From the day I dreamed of it, it can't, it can't be just simple bread. The steamed bun is already a nickname for my newborn daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, it will always stand for new life. Bread is sustaining food for life, not only meets the most basic human need, but also symbolizes human life itself. Bread for life. It is as profound as it is simple. And whether it is bread for all life in people's history, or bread for new life in my personal story, bread finds one more layer of profoundness as we celebrate World Communion Sunday today. Today, wherever people gather in the name of Jesus and break bread together, like us gathering here, our bread for life meets the bread of life. I am the bread of life, Jesus says in the Gospel of John. And today we celebrate the dwelling of this bread of life in our bread for life. Today at our communion table, this bread that comes down from heaven is embodied in our bread out of the earth. This bread gives life to the world is present in our bread that sustains life in the world. And in this mystical communion between the sacred and the mundane, 
our communion bread baked by Stephanie with love this morning becomes the profound package of grace. Although our bread is what Jesus calls the food that perishes, in contrast to the food that endures for eternal life, here at our communion table, we, we, we will find no dualism between the temporal and eternal, the material and the spiritual. It's because Jesus himself, world made flesh, overcomes such binary. <coughs> It is because Jesus, by giving himself for us, opens up the way to reconcile God and the world. Thanks to Jesus and our communion table, we see the heavenly in the earthly. We see the profound love in this simple food. We see the power to change the world in the sharing of a humble meal. And this is the good news. God's grace is never far from us. Rather, it is wrapped in the form of our daily bread. And this is the holy mystery. The divine is incarnated in Jesus' body, and by sharing his body, we, the human, are incorporated into the body of Christ, the church. The good news of the embodied grace and the mysterious bodily connection between God and us hinges on Jesus, the bread of life. On this World Communion Sunday, Christians everywhere celebrate him, bringing us to his table and making us one across all our differences. And as we continue to celebrate, I hope and pray we may also think about the way to expand our table and share Jesus with more people and invite more people to find nourishment here in our church. And I find one of the ways to do so not far from us. Every Saturday morning, Open Door Ministry of our church makes simple bread to serve the unhoused. This bread is the famous Mexican bread, quesadilla. You can see, um, see them on the table. I took them from the open door ministry yesterday. <laughs> Sorry for those three people, but I will share it later. <laughs> Early in the morning, leaders and volunteers meet in the church kitchen. Make a simple filling with tomatoes, beans, onions and ground turkey and put, put it in the tortillas with some cheese to make quesadillas. Most of the time it is Charles who cooks them on a large griddle, so we call this quesadilla chacadilla. <laughs> Yesterday we brought out the tables to the courtyard as usual and shared 280 quesadillas with our guests. As I make and serve them, why consecrate quesadillas as the communion bread? No. But why feel the presence of Jesus as I make those quesadillas? Do I think that this simple bread for life can be a package of the bread of life? Every single time. And I would like to invite you to feel that too. I mean, please volunteer. <laughs> Today I dream of the world communing around the table of Jesus, whether that is a solid wood table in our sanctuary, an ordinary dining table at home, a plastic table in the courtyard, or a cardboard table on the street. I pray there be bread whether that is baked bread, steamed buns, or cooked quesadillas, I pray there be the bread of life also. And I pray what Jesus says may come true to all. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty.
how simple you are bread and how profound. A literary critic beautifully characterized, characterized the way Pablo Neruda writes to the old, saying, Neruda democratized the old by using it to celebrate the mundane. If our God is a poet, I think God may write an ode, an ode to celebrate the world. And I sometimes imagine Jesus as the divine ode to our human lives, the holy ode to our humble bread for life. In this world of love, God's earthbound tribute to our lives meets our heavenward adoration of grace. As we sing this beautiful ode with our voices at the table, as we celebrate the bread of life with all the people around the world today, may we always remember the tune of love and the rhythm of faith, and may our hearts be reverberated with the sound that calls us to God's mission in this world. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Even when I suffer and when I'm in pain, I am still happy. Let me be near to you, my Lord.
life-giving spirit as you gather all your children and all your creation into your loving arms we offer up to you the cares of our heart we pray for members and friends of our church community who are sick who are lonely who are in need of your loving touch help us to be the body of Christ for them we offer up to you on this day, O oh God, the prayers that we carry for the world. We especially lift up to you those places where people are living in times of terror and in places of war. We pray for children who are hungry, and we pray for your creation, this planet that cries out for healing. O oh God, indeed you create and you share more than we could ever hope to return to you. And so as we prepare for this morning's offering, we ask that you would accept our humble gifts. We pray that they may honor you and empower us for the work of justice, for the sake of peace in the whole wide world. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. At this time, I do invite our ushers to come forward as we prepare for this morning's offering. And as we do and receive Divya's dancing, we invite Divya to share um, words about the song before she dances. May we give. Hi, my name is Vivia. Uh, I know they've probably said that a few times, but I'm a student here at UT, and I'm so happy to be here performing for you guys. I was so happy when the church and Alicia asked me if I would perform. It's like my favorite thing to do. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the piece I'm performing for 
you today. It's called Mohana Kalyani Pallavi, and it's an Odissi exploration of a famous Thelana. And Odissi is actually the name of the art form that I'm going to be performing for you today. It's one of India's nine classical art forms, and it's the oldest, so I would say it's the best. But I'm not like biased or anything. It's just purely my professional opinion that it's, it has the longest history. Um, yeah, it originates in the Indian state of Odisha, which is why it has the name Odissi. And yeah, and so this piece um, is it's composed or it's choreographed to a song by a famous composer named Lalguri G. J. Raman. And we have taken the interpretation of this Thalana by the group, the A Quartet, and used the instrumental rendition and designed a Savine Balavi on it, which is like a lot of big words, but essentially what it says is that we took a piece that actually isn't traditionally used for Odyssey and we choreographed it with Odyssey steps. So it's kind of like a fusion piece. The choreographer is my guru, Dr. Srimati Aparupa Chatterjee, and the raga is Mohana Kalyani, and the thal is Adita. And I also just wanted to say I'm here on behalf of Odyssey Dance Company today, which is the company I'm a part of, and we are actually based in Austin, Texas. So what a great place to like perform today. But yeah, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
body or spirit as we join together in our prayer and dedication. With joyful hearts, we offer ourselves and our gifts to God. This day I am grateful for dancers and the preacher of the hour and for music that opens our hearts and our minds and our eyes to the world. For all of our gifts, we give God thanks. May our offerings be signs of your gifts to the whole world, bringing healing and reconciliation. But you, O oh God, refuse to abandon us to destruction. Christ takes on the flesh in the midst of struggle. You are glimpses of hope, encounters of freedom, tastes of what satisfies, 
satisfies when so much leaves empty. As we gather at this table, we bring us the cares of our heart and prayers for the world. In these incarnate moments, we sense the closeness of your kingdom, and we are inspired to sing with all creation in praise of you. reorder the world into right relationship. You lift up those made low. You humble the arrogant. You hear the earth groaning under greed and consumption. And your fire burns in the hearts of your prophets. With this hope and assurance, we turn to the witness of Jesus, whose teaching revealed the way to liberation. We seek his wisdom. We practice his courage. We remember his radical commitment to love. And it was on the night in which Jesus was arrested that he shared a meal with his closest friends, his companions. At that meal, he took bread and blessed it, gave thanks to you, O God, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said to them, This is the bread of new life. And it's been broken for many. It's been broken for you. After the supper was over, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks to you, O God, asked for a blessing over the cup, and said to his disciples, his friends, he said, Take and drink from this cup, all of you, for this is the cup of the new covenant. It's been poured out for you, it's been poured out for many, it's been poured out for the entire world for the forgiveness of sins. So drink often of this cup, and do it in remembrance of me. And so it is in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ that we offer ourselves in thanksgiving and in praise as we proclaim indeed the mystery of our faith. your gifts, making this bread and this cup be for us a holy encounter, reminding us that Christ is with us, that resurrection is a promise granted to us, and that the beloved community is always closer than we can imagine. May we be nourished, may we have dreams, so that we might nourish others. Amen. the version that you feel most comfortable, we pray together. Our Father, who 
art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. bread of new life and the cup of forgiveness. Friends, it's in moments like this that our eyes and hearts are open to see the extraordinary and the ordinary and to find God present in our lives. We remind you that all are invited to come as you feel led. Our choir will come and be searched first and then the ushers will guide you. At this time, we do invite the servers to come as we prepare.
Friends, please join me in the prayer after receiving. Loving God, you have met us at the table to unite us with you and with neighbors around the world. Go with us now into the world that we might be a living sign of welcome among refugees, of freedom among the oppressed, of hope amid persecution, of peace amid violence, of living faith amid a culture of skepticism and of loving kindness towards the earth and all our inhabitants. Amen. Friends, if you will swip, uh, flip over to the next couple of pages, there's lots of great stuff happening in the next month or two here at the church that we would love for you all to be a part of. I want to sp uh, specifically uh, highlight the Thursday morning lesson with Pastor Earl starting on uh, October 5th, but there's also lots of other really great stuff in here. If you are new and would like to uh, talk about joining the church or want to know more, uh, please talk with one of the pastors after the service. We also have a class that's going to be starting, I think, next Sunday um, for the introdu introduction to the United Methodist Church. So that's also an option if you are interested in that. With that, friends, let's stand and sing our closing hymn, Let Us Be Bread.
today's benediction, I would like to share um, the prayer that Pastor Teresa wrote for the World Communion Sunday. So take these words. Gracious God, we need today's reminder of a table large enough to welcome the entire world as we take you in. Call us to look beyond ourselves. May the mystery of bread and wine and bodies increase our reverence for every life. Amen. We're going to sing uh, the first verse in Zulu and then we'll sing in English. Thank you. 